In fact, more than half of the Allied bombs dropped during the war did not fall within a thousand feet of their target. However, uh, destroying Auschwitz in an extermination camp is absolutely different from this. You're not trying to blast the place down into smithereens. You're trying to stop the killing process without killing the inmates. And that's vastly harder. Now, the gas chambers at Auschwitz are about the size of two, two tennis courts, and they were partially underground. Now, planes flying over 30,000 feet with the technology that existed in 1944, which consists of simply pushing a button and dropping the bomb when you think you're over the target, plainly will not have the, uh, the, the precision necessary to do this, plainly and obviously. After three months of debate, both the British government and the U.S. War Department rejected all requests to bomb the death camp and the railway lines leading to it. The final refusal to, to bomb Auschwitz in 1944 has, I think, many causes. First of all, they wanted to focus on the military issues, and they thought they would defeat Germany quite quickly and liberate people anyway. Uh, secondly, the operation was a difficult operation um, over a long distance where there could be no real certainty that you would actually find the target and destroy it with any kind of accuracy. And I think the combination of these different considerations in the end persuaded the Allies that, that bombing Auschwitz was not worth it. It remains one of the most controversial decisions of the war. The RAF flew missions to Warsaw to drop aid to the Home Army during the Warsaw Uprising in August 1944. If that was possible, why wasn't it possible to bomb the Auschwitz camp? Even if it had caused collateral damage or been ineffective, it would have sent a very powerful message to the Nazis. It might have scared them into shutting down the gas chambers. It would have showed that the Allies were not prepared to see millions of innocent people being slaughtered just because they were Jewish. And the failure to make that gesture, that moral gesture, will forever be a stain on the Allies' war record. If it was tried, it might have worked. On the other hand, what you might well have had had been a complete fiasco. You might have actually killed the Jews leave, while leaving the uh, gas chambers and crematoria intact, in, in which case uh, there would have unquestionably have been denunciations of this foolhardy mission. Uh, then and now. The Allies' priority remained the intense offensive against Germany's military and industrial targets. As part of that campaign, U.S. bombers attacked the IG Farben synthetic oil plant at Monowitz. By a supreme irony, some of the bombs meant for the factory actually hit the death camp at Auschwitz-Birkenau. These are authentic aerial photographs from the actual raid on the 13th of September. Bombs fell on the Birkenau railway sidings leading to the crematoria and on the barracks of Auschwitz I, killing 40 prisoners and 15 SS guards. We heard the bombing. It was a joy. How joyful it was when we shouted, hooray, hooray, drop the bombs, drop the bombs everywhere, come on. We were not worried whether we are going to get killed, but we only, that's the first contact we had with the, with the Allied forces. The first contact with, which we had with the people who we hoped are going to liberate us. I'd rather die by a bomb an English or whatever, and then go on living like that. This extraordinary photograph shows bombs destined for the IG Farben factory poised directly over crematoria two and three. The accidental bombing had no effect on the operation of the death camp. The killing at Auschwitz continued, until finally the SS themselves dismantled the gas chambers and crematoria 
destroying the evidence of extermination from the advancing Soviet army. In total, almost one and a half million people, political prisoners, Soviet POWs, homosexuals, gypsies, Jews, had been murdered at Auschwitz. On the 27th of January, 1945, Soviet soldiers liberated the camp. The SS had left the weakest prisoners behind to die. Thousands of others had already been transported to labor camps and factories in Germany. Hundreds of thousands perished on forced death marches. Between the first request to bomb Auschwitz in July 1944 and the destruction of the crematoria by the SS, more than 150,000 people had been murdered in the gas chambers. I think there's no question that the Allies should have done more, not just in the case of Auschwitz, but in the, the case of the mounting evidence of German genocide and, and barbarism. Um, and I think that was a moral lapse on the part of the Allies. The Jews were being killed by the Nazis, and it was to stop this, you had to stop Nazi Germany by destroying it. It's as simple as that. And uh, that was what the Allies were trying to do and did very successfully. The rejection of the appeals to bomb Auschwitz was a practical military decision. But the overwhelming moral case for action was simply ignored by the Allied decision makers. Many of them in, in the British intelligence, in the American Air Force, and the British government sincerely believed that the best way to save the Jews would be to defeat the Germans and that any deviation from that task would be a betrayal. They simply lacked the imagination, as well as, for a long time, the information, to understand that each day that passed, thousands of Jews were being murdered in the camp, and that any excuse for not acting, however well-intentioned, condemned those thousands of people to death. Now, I had a dream, and in the dream, I was searching for my wife and child. A thousand of people, all over I was, asking, looking, and I couldn't find them. And then I said to myself in my dream, I'll give up. They're dead. I can't find them. I don't want to go on now. Leon survived the death march from Auschwitz. He was liberated from Buchenwald camp in April 1945. The following year, he discovered that his wife and child had been murdered in Auschwitz-Birkenau. Probably on the very day they had arrived. Next on the History Channel, a Jewish family of dwarves captivated the Nazi's angel of death and were made his special test subjects. In the end, it would become their saving grace. Standing tall at Auschwitz, next on the History Channel.